Yo, 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 what up, what up, what up, people, shout out to everybody out there who's joining the stream, and uh, big up, big up, big up, big ups to you, and welcome back to another edition of Mike on Sports, I am your host, I go by the name of Mike Gross, man, big ups to that 501, and big ups to that 317, we in the building, yes, sir. Happy Monday to everybody out there, man. Hopefully everybody being safe. Everybody's being clean. Everybody is taking this shit seriously. Even though we got some boxers who may not be doing the same, but we'll definitely get into that. We got a jam-packed show for you. We're talking a little bit of Terrence Crawford today. We're talking a little bit of Mikey Garcia and Manny Pacquiao today. We're talking about Calvin Smith and David Benavidez today. We're talking about Gabriel Rosado. We're talking about Daniel Jacobs today. And also, man, we got a, a, a up-and-coming heavyweight who seems to want to dip his, uh, his toes into the fire very, very quick. So we'll be talking about that too, but. Before we get to all that, man, big ups to everybody out there in the chat, man. I appreciate you, at you guys joining me. Uh, man, one thing that happened this weekend that I want to get to, that I want to talk about, is definitely what I seen this past weekend on uh before we get to the the the, the topics. I seen uh Jamal Charlo on social media. Whoa. Man, now look, we are we already seen Jamel Charlo. We seen him fighting Tony Tony Harrison. So we seen his setup. We seen his house. Looks great down there in Texas. You know what I'm saying? Got him some land, built him a house. So awesome. But man, oh man, oh man. When I seen that Jamal Charlo behind the scenes and he going to like the MTV cribs back in the day. Bruh, this man house is ridiculous. First of all, man, shout out to the gate. You know what I'm saying? He got the two lines only on the gate. Whoever made that did a great job. You know what I'm saying? I like the I like the lines only estates. You know what I'm saying? Then we get to the uh, driveway. He got he got a couple of toys out there in the driveway. You know what I'm saying? He right he riding around on his ATV. You know, I mean, just a just a beautiful house, man. He has the uh, the De- De- DeLorean. You know what I'm saying? From Back to the Future. Uh, that car he has that in his front in like front room by the door. Uh, he has uh, a big ass backyard, big swimming pool. Like the 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 house is just spectacular. Like I'm like, I'm, I'm watching the um, the IG the IG video right now as we speak, and uh, it's just it's just amazing to me. You know what I'm saying? People always say this and that about. PBC fighters and, and how Al is not, you know what I'm saying? He he's uh not taking care of him. But look at these guys like your Dennis Ugas and and uh Aries Lonnie Lara, Jamel, Jamal Charlo, both of them guys. Man, this house is a man house player. I would share the video, but it's like a PBC video, so I don't want to get flagged, you know what I'm saying? But he, he got the white Rolls Royce, he got the Mercedes Benz, he got the uh he got, oh, we got the Bentley. Oh, my God. Man. Then he got the Porsche. Look like the Porsche truck. The house, the inside of the house is beautiful, man. WBC champion. Charlo on the wall. The DeLorean, you know what I'm saying? Back to the future. Room for the shoes. All the latest. Man, he is, uh, the house is, the pool is ridiculous, man. The pool is ridiculous. You got a private chef. Then uh, with me some things up, frying some chicken right now, man. Look, only thing I gotta say, man, big ups to PVC and big ups to all the guys over there on PVC. Y'all house looking like that, man. I am proud of you guys. And and uh that was one of the best things that I've seen this weekend in boxing, to be honest. So big ups to Jamal Charlo for that. Moving right along, man. Let's go ahead and get into it while while we're waiting. All right. Terrence Bud Crawford made the news today. You know what I'm saying? He had some things that I was looking like sideways to. You know, uh, I was just like, come on, Terrence, bro. You can't be saying this kind of shit. You can't be saying this kind of shit. I know, look, man, I'm I 
I'm all for a good conspiracy. You know what I'm saying? I'm I believe I'm I'm good for a good, good uh conspiracy theory. The moonwalk, the the JFK, Bigfoot, aliens. I'm I'm all for a good conspiracy. But bud, I can't go with this one, dog. I can't go with the COVID-19 is a conspiracy, brother. And we're going to break it down. We're going to give you what he, his actual words, you know what I'm saying? So without further ado, man, let's go ahead and get to the screen share so you guys can see what my guy Terrence said, man. And uh, we're going we gonna to read it, man. We're going to take it. And I, I, and I'm not laughing about what he said. I'm just laughing at the thought process of putting that out there. You know what I'm saying? Like, can you, you want to put that out there now? Ah, right, you sound like Boosie did this morning on uh on the Breakfast Club. I'm not bullshit. Let me see. There we go. All right. Uh, let me see what he says. Terrence Crawford believes that there is conspiracy to use COVID-19 to create fear. So he's saying it, saying that this right here is uh is a way for the world. Like, I mean, you can't just say our government. You got to say the the world to create fear. Ah, yeah, that that right there just nah, bro. That ain't that ain't the way to go. But we're gonna read the story, man. We're gonna try to give him the benefit of, of the doubt. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, yeah, I know I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a big Bud fan, but Bud. You must smoke in the Omaha weed or something, god damn. And I know you don't you you don't even smoke or drink. Terrence Crawford is not convinced that the ongoing coronavirus pandemic is a, as bad as the media and government officials are suggesting. The WBO welterweight world champion revealed that he has not been telling his family to stay indoors and claiming the effects of COVID-19 were being overstated by officials and news outlets. Over 1.8 million have had a confirmed case worldwide, including over 535,000 alone in the United States, where over 20,000 people who have been tested positive for the disease have died. So just break that down, man. Just just break that down real quick. Uh, you got 535,000 cases, you know what I'm saying? And you take 10% of that, it's 53,000. So uh, just under 5% of people who have contracted the disease in America have died. All right. And that's, and, and that's only 1.8 million people who, who have been tested. Oh, no, that's only 535,000 people who have been tested in, in, the, in America. Like we got a, we got a, you know what I'm saying? We got like 300 some million people in, in America. And if that's the case, then if you if you look at under five percent of three hundred and sixty million, you look in there what third what eighteen million deaths? You look a little under, you know what I'm saying? Somewhere around there, my, my mouth not that great, you know what I'm saying? All right, even though it even though it is, I don't I just don't have a a calculator right now. It's early in the morning. Uh, Crawford, who says a friend of his has contracted the illness, is still training during the pandemic. It, it ain't no different to any other day. I'm not locked up in the house. I'm not locking my kids up in the house. I'm telling you, he he was talking to Sports Illustrated. So big up to Sports Illustrated for the uh, for the quotes. I don't feel like these people that they say are dying and are sick from it is actually true. I think they're just using fear to try to control us right now for something else. Now, I got to stop you right there, Mr. Bud Crawford, because if we, if you really want to go down that route, and I hate to, you know what I'm saying, bring up bring this up for example, but you think Anthony Yard, you know what I'm saying, is out here uh, uh, faking it? You only, you, do you think he, he he lost his grandmother and his father to, uh, uh, to this shit? You think that's all uh, uh, a spoof? You know what I'm saying, do you think that 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 the leaked video that we seen of of hospitals in New York filling up 18 wheelers freezers with bodies because they ain't got nowhere to put them? You think that's that, that that's a joke? 
Like, come on, man. We gotta be we, 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 we gotta be smarter than this, man. We gotta we gotta be a very gotta use your heads more. You know what I'm saying? When you're putting stuff out there like that. Uh I I definitely don't think it's a game. I don't think it's a a, a way for them to use uh control of uh, fear to control us. Uh, I, I think that that Terrence Crawford, you know what I'm saying? He's uh he's being either misinformed or he's getting his information uh that's drawn him to these conclusions from the wrong source. You know what I'm saying? I I'm not I'm not uh look at Italy, bro. Like, come on, man. Like, look at look at what's going on over there. They shut the whole country down, bro. Thousands and thousands and thousands of people have died over in Italy, man. Like, come on, you got to be smarter than this, man. You, you, <laughs> for a man who looks so intelligent in the ring and 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 just does great things in the ring, you're not showing that same level with, of intelligence with this story. Not saying all around in your life, but I'm saying with this specific story. Yeah, I'm not I'm not seeing it. But back to the story. I don't know what it is, but me personally, I just can't agree with a whole bunch of things that they're saying now. The media runs the world. You put anybody on you put anything on, on then everybody's gonna run with it and you have people scared. No, not really, bro. Not not really. Do you not remember when people were, were making jokes about the coronavirus a couple months ago? Motherfucker laughing about all he got that wrong. <laughs> and man, we, we, we out here downplaying it. The media wasn't pushing it like that. Do you think the NBA, the NFL, the Major League Baseball, all these stores that, that are doing a, a takeout only, do you think they are in with the media? Come on, man. This shit, with, when, when NBA got that call or did that game in, in, in OKC. I knew for a fact, I knew for a fact this shit was more serious than what we thought. More serious than what we thought. And we can tell that it's more serious than, than what we thought because they, they're they saying the, uh, the, um, the, the, the curve is starting to flatten. But what happens when everybody starts to go back outside? How do you know who's immune from it, who's not immune? How do you know who's going to be infected and who's not infected? This is not a game. It's not a a, a elaborate uh, conspiracy theory. and it, It's just not, in my opinion. Um, they say they really don't affect healthy individuals. Only the elderly are those who with problems like asthma or breathing disorder. But that's like any cold or flu. Nah, bro. It affects everybody. It, it affects children. It affects uh, 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 people who are younger, people my age, people are older. It doesn't matter. It affects everybody. You got to protect the ones with body issues like overweight or obesity. One of our friends said she said it, but she said she's doing better now. So that was the only person. I'm enjoying time with my family at home, laid back and chilled. I'm not anxious. I have my own boxing gym and I got everything, treadmills, bikes, Jacob ladders, whatever you, you need, I got it. Crawford, who has 36 and 0, said he's questioned by some professors are still allowed to work. If it's so bad, then, wh then why are there are people still picking up trash? Why are people working but you can't only do takeout? I have a lot lower questions I need answers to. What about all the police officers that are still working? Me, if I was a cop, if I was that bad, then I wouldn't be working. I don't agree with what they're saying. Now, look, he, he, those are some very good points. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I, I don't feel like that there should be people out here doing takeout food and and all that shit. Like, if 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 if, I, if we can't have, uh, if I can't be in the same vicinity as you, more than three feet, six feet, or whatever. I don't need you making my food. I don't need you cooking shit of mine. You know what I'm saying? So I, I feel them on that. Now, as far as the cops go, you know what I'm saying? Like that's that's just part part of being a public servant. Like somebody has to make sure that the 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 curfews are are enforced. Somebody has to make sure that that people are 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 uh using 
social distancing and people aren't going to the grocery stores and and just stealing shit and and and, and chaos and anarchy doesn't just 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 come come out you know what i'm saying so we need police officers uh to like keep the peace and maintain uh uh the communities you know what i'm saying but uh i do i like i i, I agree with him you know what i'm saying like i don't understand why why uh certain people are still out here working when they're saying that the uh that the disease is is probably going to uh have another uh resurgence don't you know saying everything the curve flattening everybody's going to go back to work and then bam when everybody go back to work it's going to start coming out again so we'll see what happens with that but that's the story from Terrence Crawford about the coronavirus uh let's go ahead and uh, hop over to uh Terrence Crawford says he prefers other opponents other than Kell Brook. That's what this was kind of uh, surprising to me. You know what I'm saying? I, I I didn't know Terrence Crawford really felt that way. Well, I can't say I, I I didn't know that he felt this way because Kell Brook ain't fought at 147 in a minute. Tough, tough, tough guy. He's gonna be a tough opponent too, and he, he 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 can fight really, really good. But let's get to the story. Let's talk about it. Let's see what we got here. Terrence Crawford would rather fight Pacquiao, Spence, Garcia, and Thurman before he fights Brooke. All right, let's see. This story is coming from Keith Oddick. There are at least Four elite welterweights Terrence Crawford would prefer fighting over Kell Brook. The unbeaten WBO welterweight champion told IFL TV during an interview posted to his YouTube channel Saturday that he would want to face an order. Manny Pacquiao, number one. Earl Spence Jr., number two. Danny Garcia and Keith Thurman. Now, I would, in my humble opinion, I would uh, I would rather him fight Kell Brook than Danny Garcia. Other than that, I think all those names are great. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I know why he wants the Manny Pacquiao fight. The, the, there's been a fight that's been dangled around his name since back in the HBO days. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not, I, I really like star star like first started watching boxing. You know what I'm saying? So I see why he wants that fight, but I don't know if 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 he's going to be able to get that fight, Manny Pacquiao. Just seemed like he has no interest in fighting Earl Spence or uh or Terrence Crawford at this point in time. But these quotes are coming from Terrence Crawford. I don't know all the details yet. I guess you know he's interested in the fight, and Bob Aram interested in the fight. And if we can if we can't get none of the top welterweights in the division. And that's the fight that we have to take. Then that's the fight we will have to take. And you know, as far as me going over there, I'll make him come over here. Being that I am the champion, he got to come over here. I don't blame him. You know what I'm saying? You, you are the champion. And, uh, if you can't get one of those names, then I get. I mean, uh, Kell Brook is a, is a is a very 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 good fighter. He's very technically skilled. Has very very good boxing IQ, very very good boxing ability. And he's a bigger welterweight too. So if he's able to make that 147 limit, then I think uh, uh, it'd be a good fight for Terrence Crawford, and maybe it might please a, a lot of fans too. Uh, each of these, each of the 33 year old Brooks' past three fights have been contested within the junior middleweight division. Brooke is confident, though, that he can't come back down to what the way limit at 147 for a shot at Crawford's crown. I just told him I'm going to fuck him up if we ever fight, Crawford said. Uh, so, yeah, man. Uh, now, look, man, uh, a fight with Danny Garcia and Terrence Crawford, I think that that, that fight is – it's over and done with. I think Danny is going to be fighting Earl Spence next. I don't think Danny Garcia really, really ever wanted to fight Terrence Crawford. Uh, he had an opportunity last year, but he did some other uh, other things. Uh, had an offer sent sent his way, but he he did not uh, take the offer. 
did not even re, uh negotiate the offer, you know what I'm saying? Send a, a, a counter offer back to the, the Crawford team. So, and this is all uh according to Brian McIntyre, you know what I'm saying? Check out the interview that I did with him, it's on the page. But Keith Thurman, he said he wants to come back and dominate the the uh uh division again. He got a win over Danny Garcia. He got a win over uh, Sean Porter. He was in a tough fight with Manny Pacquiao. So if he's able to, to come back 100%, 100% and everything is healed up, you know what I'm saying, with him, uh, then, yeah, man, I would love to see him fight Terrence Crawford and uh, try to get him, get him a belt as fast as possible. Because, like, when you look at it, what is Keith Thurman's fastest route to get a belt again? A Manny Pacquiao rematch. I'm not sure Manny Pacquiao is is, is uh interested in, in that fight. Errol Spence, he may give him a little crumb, you know what I'm saying? He may he may throw Keith a little bone. Who knows? You know what I'm saying? Errol Errol been saying he wanna beat all these guys there. So he who knows? You no, know? he he Errol might Errol might fuck around and fight him just just based off GP. But if you want a sure fire, you know what I'm saying? Try to get you a better on pay per view ESPN. Come on over, you know what I'm saying? And uh, how about that boy Bud? He's been talking a lot of stuff about Bud, you know what I'm saying? Before he got in the division, while he was in the end of the, the uh, division, and after he won his title. So you got all that stuff to say, uh, Keith. Why not, why not call Terrence Crawford's name out and uh, try to get that fight? But we all know why, right? We all know why. I mean, we ain't we ain't gonna sit here in front like we don't know what the reason why is. Come on, people. A lot of these guys can sit here and talk about Terrence and say he ain't this and he ain't that. He ain't the he ain't that guy, you know what I'm saying? He, he whatever. All those guys who talk, they ain't really wanna get in the ring with him. They don't wanna get in the ring with him. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I don't know if these guys really want to get in the ring with him. I ain't, I'm just being real with you. Say what? Well, I'm I'm keeping it a hundred. Sometimes, man, you you when you look at this, you know what I'm saying? Um, this boxing game, man, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. People can call you out, say you ain't done this, and say you ain't done that. But when once you get there. It's crickets. Like you don't you don't hear no more. Like I thought he was talking. Nah, I wasn't I wasn't really talking to you. I was talking to I was talking to somebody else, man. I wouldn't I wouldn't but nigga, you said my name. Oh, I did? <laughs> yeah, you said my name. Man, that was old, bro. I, man, that was old, man. That's old, man. I was talking about when, when I had my belt. Nah, yo, that's so at the end of the day, man. Only thing Bud Tim can do is keep asking, keep probing, keep seeing if these guys want to fight. And if not, you got to do what Bo Max said. You're probably going to have to fight Kell Brook, move up, fight Patrick Texter, get you a belt at 154, become a four division world champion. And uh, hopefully by that time, the dust will have been cleared over there on PBC. And we can see uh, if, if, if uh, the winner out of those guys. Really wants to get in the ring with you. Moving right along, what we got up next, ladies and gentlemen, we have the one that they call Mikey Garcia. And he said some things about Manny Pacquiao that I've been saying, you know what I'm saying, that that, that I've been uh, pointing out. Uh, and I'm glad that that, that 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 he sees like what I see, you know what I'm saying, like, um, I've been saying, uh, Manny, I, I feel like Mikey Garcia and Manny Pacquiao would be a better matchup for, for, for Mikey because Manny is a smaller guy, you know what I'm saying? He's not uh, the, the big guy like uh, Terrence Crawford or Earl Spence or Sean Porter or even a Keith Thurman, is, you know what I'm saying? Like he, Mikey won't be at that big of a reach disadvantage when he fights Manny Pacquiao. He probably won't be at, at a reach disadvantage. Uh, disadvantage at all you know what i'm saying but let's get to the story you know what i'm saying let's, let's break down what mikey garcia said and uh and see if he uh taking a uh, page out of my book with some of these quotes because i've been thought that 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 mikey's 
style could be a problem for Manny Pacquiao with his timing, with his good boxing skills. Manny Pacquiao tends to, to uh, jump in a lot. Let Mikey Garcia catch that motherfucker on the chin is going to be a problem. I'm telling you guys right now, Manny Pacquiao, man, he's a he's a terrific fighter. He's a damn good fighter. Uh, I believe in him, but I think I think man, uh, I think people are sleeping on the fact that Mikey Garcia has a has, has a very 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 good chance of defeating Manny Pacquiao. And uh, let's get to the story. Mikey Garcia was on the wrong end of a lopsided decision the first time he fought a left-handed welterweight. The fourth division champion can't see his record his can't see his second welterweight fight against a southpaw unfolding similarly. Like Garcia, Manny Pacquiao essentially is an ambitious junior welterweight with, according to Garcia, makes him much more beatable than Earl Spence Jr. Absolutely agree. Absolutely agree. I think what with, with I think I believe like Manny came in like at 143 or 145 when he fought Keith Thurman. So he like Manny's not coming in like over like 150 ish. You know what I'm saying? Like he he's a he's a very, very relatively small guy that has a lot of power, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Tends to, to knock these guys down and, and knock them out. You know what I'm saying? But he hasn't got a knockout since uh uh who he knocked out. What's my guy name? Uh damn. Damn, was my guy name? He fought him over there in Malaysia. Shit, I ain't got box for right now. Help me out, y'all. Put his name in the chat for me. I would love the opportunity to, to fight Manny. I think Styles, you, you know, make fights, and he's not this tall, lanky fighter that can come that can complicate things like Earl Spence did. Earl Spence is a tall fighter who uses the reach very effectively in height. And you know, he's a southpaw, which always complicates things. Talking about Earl Spence right there. Manny's still a southpaw, but he's a lot smaller in size. So he's shorter in height, doesn't have the reach like some of these other welterweights. So I think that fits much better to get an entertaining fight with me. I think it fits just right. I mean, I remember sparring with, with him years and years ago, and I was able to fight in the way similar to like Eric Morales or one Manuel Marquez, you, you know, boxing. And we did very well. It was only sparring sessions, but I felt good. I was able to time him. I was able to use my jab effectively. And that's why I think that that fight makes the best sense right now. To prove to everybody that I could be a world champion at this welterweight limit. And speaking of being a world champion at welterweight, this is probably his best chance at getting a welterweight title. Uh, honestly, I can't see him beating well, Terrence Crawford because we already seen that he couldn't beat he couldn't even deal with uh he couldn't even deal with fucking um Earl Spence and the Jesse Vargas fight. Like I know it was 116, 111 on two cards and 114, 113, but that fight was a little bit closer than that. And and he and he, he was having problems with, with Jesse uh uh towards the uh, end of that fight. Now when it comes to like matchups and things like that, um, do I think that that Mikey Garcia matches up better with Pacquiao? Absolutely. Uh, I think what he stated, the height, the reach, uh, Pacquiao not being a true welterweight. Um, and uh, he has past experience with Pacquiao. He's been in the uh, sparring session with, with, with Pacquiao. So maybe he's taken some sense of uh, of accomplishment from those sparring sessions. And, and he's really, you know what I'm saying, riding with it. Like, hey, man. I, I'm I'm a lot better than I was back then. And even back then, I was having success using my jab, timing you when you hop in. You know what I'm saying? Just just pretty much uh uh boxing you. And I, I think Mikey Garcia can potentially do it again when it's all said and done. But we will we will see. We will see. Uh that's it for that story. Let's see. Moving right along, what story we, we, do we have? Uh, 
Knicks. Hey, yes, sir. What story do we got up next, ladies and gentlemen? Hmm. Don't forget, if you're listening right now on YouTube, take a second now and smash that thumbs up button. It helps with the visibility of the show. If you want to go one step farther, tell a friend to tell a friend about Mike on Sports. Like, subscribe, and share all my videos. Moving right along to Calvin Smith. Thanks to him and David Benavidez is the best unification fight in the division. I really don't have to read that story. You know what I'm saying? I I would tend to agree. I would tend to agree. I really do like the fact that uh, um, both guys are like 6'3", 6'4"-ish. You know what I'm saying? Maybe Callum maybe is a smudge taller than uh, than David Benavidez, but I like the way David Benavidez fights, man. He fight like His fighting style just reminds me of a guy who is looking to destroy his, his opponent. He's going to walk forward, do his best to cut that ring off, use his height, use his range, not really get into a whole lot of inside fighting with guys. And he's going for the kill, man. Like uh, El Ben El, El you know what I'm I, I think that's what they call himself, El Bandejo. He a bad motherfucker, bro. And and when it comes down to it, when when I look at the division, I see Billy Joe Saunders. I, I see I see Canelo, but he ain't got a real belt, so I can't call him a champion. I see uh I see um Taylor Plant. And I'm looking. And I'm looking like, damn, Calvin Smith may be right. I think that is the best unification in the division. I think that is the most entertaining matchup in that division. I think that is the most 50-50 fight in the division. Because I got... I got David beating everybody, man. No, no disrespect to, to, to any of those other fighters. I, I just think I think David Benavidez is a bad young man. He's only 23, and he is gonna be here for a long time. And he's been crushing guys out, man. I know his, his resume maybe not stack up against some of the other guys in the division, but he's a lot younger than the, these than these other guys, too. And I respect the fact that Kevin Smith is not shying away from that guy. We all know after Callum won the tournament, even before he won the tournament, he won that WBC silver belt during the tournament, has had, had that belt. And last year, uh, Mauricio said that he was supposed to get a shot at uh, David Benavidez this year. But – with coronavirus and things like that, you know what I'm saying? A lot of things going to have to be rescheduled, reassigned, and things like that. So I understand that. But this has been a fight that I want to see. It's been a fight that's been talked about. It's been a fight that shit has been happening, you know what I'm saying? I know that uh, my boy David had his his trials and tribulations, you know what I'm saying? Calling him that, that, the, the cocaine cowboy for a reason. But at the end of the day, these are – in my opinion, number one and number two in the division. You know, I mean, I I, I love Kevin Plant. He's a good guy. He's a great guy. But maybe not. Look, man, I, I don't know. Maybe Kevin Plant can can beat uh can beat uh uh a uh, Kevin Smith. But I don't know because Kevin Plant is a boxer puncher that like, likes to box off the back foot. Can he get on the inside and 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 use that boxing ability or 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 will uh? Will Kevin Smith be able to keep him at bay? You know what I'm saying? Things like that. But when I look at this fight, I think it's a fight that is long overdue. I think that it's a fight that should be happening, should or or should happen uh, relatively soon. Uh, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. And I I, I think Kevin uh, Smith is, is absolutely 1,000% on the money when he says that a fight between him and David Benavidez is the best unification in the division. Absolutely, 1,000%. Uh, moving right along, man, we got a quick story right quick. Frank Sanchez, the up-and-coming heavyweight out of Cuba, 
he says that he is willing to face Michael Hunter or Junior Thaw in a eliminator. Now, look. Michael Hunter may be a step too much, too quick, too soon for him. You know what I'm saying? They, they, they say he's like 26, 27 years old, but I swear, motherfucker about 35, 36. Uh, but he's – and maybe that's why he, he he's wanting to maybe start fast-tracking, you know what I'm saying, things that he got going on. I think the junior five fight is a better fight for him than, than Michael Hunter. I think Michael Hunter has been on this level. He's proven he's uh, been in there with better opposition. Junior Fi, not so much. We haven't really seen Junior Fi uh, in there with anybody of note. Uh, last time I seen him fight, I believe it was on uh, Showbox. Uh, I believe he he went the distance on something. Like he tends to go the distance sometimes in his fight and not really show that 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 power at heavyweight. So, uh, if I were Frank Sanchez and his team, I would be looking towards the Junior Fi fight. Michael Hunter may be a tad too much. This quick in in Frank's uh boxing uh uh career, but um fight. I mean, it's it, it's heavyweights. Uh, I'm I'm excited. You know what I'm saying? If if uh Frank fights Junior Fi, I'm all in. If Frank's even fight uh my guy Fa Jagba, I'm all in. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I think Frank. I'm I'm, I'm not going to sit here and lie. Haven't really been been that sold on Frank Sanchez. Uh, not really, really been impressing me that much when he fights in the ring. Uh, went to the the, the decision in his last fight, and I always just thought that he's supposed to get that guy up out of there. So uh, Frank Sanchez is cool. He aight. He aight. You know that's about it. He he aight. You know what I'm saying? You know, we got to see what his development is. Uh. How how he develops, how fast he develops, uh, can he can he take on the uh, the uh, top names and things like that, or or is it just is he just gonna be one of those guys that we see and we be like, ah right, man, yeah, I, I remember Frank, he fought so and so, but he never really got the job done. Last but not least. Last but not least, man, one thing that I if you guys know me, I say this all the time. One thing that I could appreciate, man, is good beef. Good beef, man. I'm talking about that motherfucking porterhouse beef. I'm talking about that ribeye steak beef, that tender cut. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about that motherfucking T-bone. We want that prime real estate, baby. Filet mignon. I love me some good beef. And these two guys, <laughs> they don't like each other. Yeah, they don't like each other at all. I'm just going to uh, talk to the call. Whoa. Sorry about that. Let's get this. Let's get the story, man. Gabriel Rosado says, I will knock out Daniel Jacobs. He's more hype than anything. And we all know, man, Gabe Rosado ain't scared to fight nobody. His, his record indicates that, you know what I'm saying? Even though he doesn't have, like, the, the shiny, glistening, you know what I'm saying, record, one thing that he does have in the sport of boxing is a lot of dudes respect. When 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 Gabe gets in the ring with you, you you gonna know that you was in the ring with with somebody who's ready to fight, who, who's ready to go go the extra mile and really 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 throw down. All right, so uh, this is coming from uh, uh, the Instagram live that he did with Eddie Hearn, and Gabe says, "I will knock out Daniel Jacobs if the fight happens because I can't get beat." Because I can't beat Daniel Jacobs. I see a lot of flaws in his game. I think there's more hype than anything. I like the guy, but I don't think that he's what they make him out to be. So I would definitely like to fight Jacobs and knock him out and do what Canelo or Golovkin didn't do. Oh, nice move. 
Oh, now look, man. I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. I ain't never, never really been sold on Daniel Jacobs. I know people will be, be, be looking at me like, Mike, what do you mean? He's a former world. Let's go to his box right, right quick, bro, because I ain't really been, I ain't really been sold on the brother. I ain't never been out here tooting the horn for Daniel Jacobs like that. Besides when he fought Gennady. That was the only time. When he came up short that fight, I knew he was going to be he's the guy that comes up short. He just comes up short too much. Now, let's go back to... All right, so... All right, let me see. I'm going to scroll down. We're going to scroll down. All right. We're going to scroll down. We're going to scroll. We'll be trying to find out. All right. So when he lost to Dimitri P. Rog, you know what I'm saying? He came back after he lost to Dimitri P. Rog. We know that he had the cancer and things like that in his body. He beat a guy named Jesse or Orta, 7 and 13. Then came back against Robert Cleaver, 11 and 12. Then came back against Josh Lutheran, 13 and 1. Then Chris Fitzpatrick, 15 and 2. Then Keenan Collins, 15 and 7. Look, for those five fights, I get him in a pass. He was coming off cancer. He didn't know uh, if, if he was going to be right. You know what I'm saying? Things like that. So I give him a pass for those five fights. Then he fought a guy, uh, Giovanni L Lorenzo. Then he fought Milton Nunez. Then he fought Gerard Fletcher. When he fought Gerard F Fletcher, he got the World Boxing. He fought Gerard Fletcher for the WBA World Middleweight title. Not the super, the regular. You know what I'm saying? Then he fought Caleb Truex, which is a good win. Even though Caleb Truex, the only good victory he got is against uh, James Aguil and that version of James Aguil we all know wasn't the James Aguil that we that we were used to seeing, and uh, we ain't gonna we ain't gonna pump that up like like it's it's some kind of uh great 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 victory now, because James Aguil was pretty much gone by the time uh, Caleb Truex got to him. We seen it well, not even that. It was a tricky fight. Both of them, it, both fights were just bad. You know what I'm saying? Like they. Their fighting styles really did not complement each other at all. And both fights were just, just bad. Then after they beat Caleb Truex, he came back and fought Soldier, Sergio Mora, got a TKO. Then came back and fought Peter Quillen, TKO. At, at, at that time, Peter Quillen was 32-0. and 0. Uh, Call him Kid Chocolate, but... Like, I'm just be real with you. I've never been really impressed by Peter Quillen. I went back and watched some of, his, some of his old fights and things like that, but ever since he came back, I haven't been impressed by what he's been doing since he got back, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, I, I, I digress. Then he fought Sergio Mora on, uh, what was it, Spike TV. And he won that fight. All right, so... Caleb Truex, solid win. Peter Quillen, solid win. Sergio Amora, solid. I mean, solid win, I guess. But none of these are like, these are like C-ish level wins right here. And just, this is just my opinion. Then he stepped up and fought Gennady Golovkin. We all know how that went. Lost a uh, unanimous decision. Then after the uh, the Golovkin fought, he fought Lewis Aries. Then he fought Selecki. Both of those went the distance. Then he got a split decision with Sergey Devranchenko. And we got to note that that Devranchenko wasn't the same one that we seen fight Golovkin. And you know the biggest reason why? Because Andre Rogier. Daniel Jacobs' trainer is also the trainer of Devrinchenko. And in that fight, he did not go with Devrinchenko. He went with Jacobs. 
But in the, the Golovkin fight with Derechenko, guess who was in his corner and made a big difference? Andre Rozier. But after the, the, the Derechenko fight, he uh won the vacant, he won a vacant IBF title. And as soon as he won it, his very next fight, he fought Canelo Alvarez and he lost it. Then he fought uh Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. Now look, man. Gabe Rosado may be right. He 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 might have a point. Maybe he is more hype, more hype than he is substance. I'm looking down that list and I'm not seeing nobody that I really really like. Okay, yeah, he he okay, he a bad mark, you know what I'm saying? I, I, you know, he a, no, I don't see it. I don't see it. I ain't seen it. Who was Tyvez Jr.? The Love King Canelo, yeah, they they damn good, and he lost both of those fights. Lost both of those fights. I'm just saying. But Ro Rosado went on to say, "I think it comes from we're two East Coast guys. He's from Brooklyn. I'm from Philly, and me and him was supposed to fight years ago. It was it was way back from when I fought Peter Quillen for a world title." which was a fight I was winning, and it got stopped on cuts at the end. Jacob was up for the fight, the winner, and then it kind of just stirred from there. We were we were supposed to fight, and it never happened. And then I said some things about him that he didn't like. I called him a bootleg Andre Ward. He didn't like that, and then he threw shots back, and just that's where it came from. But you know, I've been calling them out. Been wanting to fight. I think the fight is huge just in boxing, period. But especially if it was on the East Coast, being that he's from Brooklyn. I've hit line in Brooklyn at Barclays Center and in Madison Square Garden. So I have a big fan base in his hometown. So it's just one of those fights that should happen. I love Jacobs against Rosado. And like it, and like it on the East Coast, Hearn said. I like the build-up. I like the fight. I like everything. So we'll see when we're back up and running. It's a, it's a fight we'll definitely look to make. Uh, Yeah, man, pretty much, bro. Look, Jacobs and Chavez, I mean, Jacobs and Gabriel, if they do fight, man, uh, yeah, good for them. You know what I'm saying? I'm, it's not like it's not going to be a fight that, that stops the boxing world or, or, or uh, really have much meaning to the 168 division after that fight is over with. But for two guys who got beef, who don't like each other, who 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 who, want, who got a point to prove towards each other, can't get mad at this kind of fight, man. You cannot get mad at this kind of fight. But that is my time, ladies and gentlemen. I do appreciate you, you, you guys joining in. Thank you for joining the stream, man. I appreciate it. We're going to be back again probably later on today with another one. Uh, I think uh, I think Keith Thurman is supposed to be doing something with uh with somebody today, so we'll see how that story go. And uh, yeah, man, y'all know what it is, bro. Until next time, I am your host. I go by the name of Mike Gross, man. Big ups to everybody out there in the chat. Big ups to everybody who watching the video now. Who watching the video now? Who watching the video now? You know what I'm saying? I appreciate it. Until next until next time. Yes, sir. Drop that B on them, baby.